All right, well, let's review our trades for today. This was the third Friday of the month, option expiration day, February 17th of 2023. So our first trade that got filled right after the market opened was our Verizon February 17th, our $39 cash secure put options. And that roll order just happened to get filled. I really didn't think it was gonna get filled, but when the stock dropped first thing this morning, it provided us the opportunity to get it filled. So we got it filled at 55 cents per share. Verizon's just kind of trading right along this area of support that has been finding since January. You see here, it's right around 39, 13 cent, 39, 58 cent, which coincides with this area here that served as resistance for it back in the fall and winter of last year. So we just, we'll just keep riding that, that strike price and we got paid decent for it. So we'll keep that position going. The next one was EQR. Here you see that we, let me pull the charts up here. See that we bought to close the February 17th, $60 covered call option. The strike price was way down here. Stocks advanced nicely. It's made a higher low. It's made higher highs. So looking strong. It is approaching this red 200 exponential moving average, which I expect to serve as resistance for it. See that's right around this over here with the green 50 weekly exponential moving average is. So expected to find some resistance coming up here soon, even though we have nice volume on our strong up weeks here. And you see each week it's just making a higher high almost and a higher low on each candlestick. So that still looks really nice and strong. So I wanted to roll that strike price up. Unfortunately, we had to go all the way out to July to do that. But that should line us up to receive a couple dividends. The one at the end of I believe they're paying one in March and one should be at the end of June or early July. So rolled it up $2.50 and pocketed a little change, but also are lined up to get that dividend. And if EQR continues to look strong, then we'll keep trying to roll this up if possible. The next one is another one we've had sitting out there. I honestly had kind of lost faith in that it was going to get rolled. This is PLD. I'll pull the chart up here. So been declining over the past couple of weeks. But now it's approaching this red 200 exponential moving average and green 50 exponential moving average on this daily chart. So we see PLD has been making nice, made a nice higher high. Now it's coming down and it has to figure out where it's going to make that, that low at. And as long as it's anywhere close to where it's at now, it'll be a, a nice higher low. Notice that not only is it hitting up against these moving averages, but I also like to look at candlesticks, which to me are just as important or maybe even more important than moving averages. And here we see that it found resistance at this area where it's at now back in the middle of December. So I do expect this to serve as support. Of course, anything can happen, but we see it, it approached it yesterday, found support, went a little lower today, found support. Interesting that it is, it has made lower highs and lower lows on these candlesticks this week. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. And this coincides over here on the weekly chart with the green 50 exponential moving average. Notice over the past month and a half, there's been nice buying pressure. And over the past two weeks, as the sellers have kind of shown some strength, the volume actually decreased. And this week was a very low volume week compared to the previous couple months. So not a lot of excitement from sellers to get rid of this thing. It's approaching. It's right here at an area that should serve as support for it. And it is serving as support for it. So odds are the support will hold. But again, like I always like to remind you, there are no guarantees, but we are playing the odds here that this, this support should hold. And if it does, then it'll be a great trade for us. If it doesn't, then we'll just adjust it in the next month. Now, DLR was our next trade. We, we owned the DL, February DLR 100, or we sold the cash secure put option there. And it was expiring worthless. DLR is trading around 110. So we knew it would expire worthless. So most likely it was going to come all the way down here to to the $100 mark. So we just let that expire worthless and decided to go ahead and sell the 105s. So let's talk through the 105s here. So we see that DLR has been in a nice upward trend here. Made a nice higher high, made a higher low, looking good, looking like it's trying to make a higher low again. But it is sandwiched in between the 200, the red 200 and the green 50 exponential moving average here on this daily chart. We see nice buying volume in here when it shot way up, kind of pierced that moving average. But now it's come back down and it's testing this green 50 moving average for support. This also coincides with this area here back in November and December 
assert his resistance. We see this a lot. I try and always point this out to, to you, that previous resistance generally turns into support. So we'll see if it does. If it does, then we'll do real well in this trade. But even if it goes against us, we still got about about four, about, no, it's about five or six dollars it can drop from where it closed today and we'll still be okay. Looking over the weekly chart, we see nice buying volume over the past month and a half, two months has made a higher low here, has already made a higher high. So looking good. I like this position. We'll, we'll see how it turns out. Now Kroger was our next, our next trade here and we just bought to close it out. It has earnings. So we paid two cents just to close it out. So we don't have to worry about it at the end of the day. I, you know, I get asked about Randy, why are you buying these back for a couple cents? Well, I don't want to just be watching them and worrying about them all day long. So if I have to pay two cent per share to close it out, I'm okay with that. If it's pretty far out of the money like DLR was, then I'm not worried about it. And I'll walk away from my computer, go do other things and just watch on my phone. But this right here, you know, it wasn't too far away from it. Let's see, Kroger was trading, ended up closing the day. Let's see where it closed it at here. See, it closed at 44. So it was really only a dollar away. So it definitely could get down there. So that's why I went ahead and closed it. Um, HRL, Home Rail, same way. I just didn't want to worry about it. it. They're announcing earnings. So I didn't want to be in this position as possible. Throughout the day, it actually closed below this $45. Actually, I actually traded below this $45 area at certain points during the day, especially at the beginning of the day. So glad to get those closed out. It only cost a nickel. We did well in that trade. So I'm more than happy to get it closed out and not have to worry about it at the end of the day. Now we had UPS, our 174 $175 shares were called away from us last night due to dividend capture, which we expected that. There was no time value left. I thought about rolling it. I decided not to. I decided just to let that 175 get called away and look for an opportunity here to sell some new ones. We had an order sitting out there to sell some new ones at a price that I'd be happy with, and it didn't get filled. So we'll look for an opportunity next week or in the coming weeks to do a new cash secure put option in UPS. But our 185 call didn't get caught away, which I was a little bit surprised about that because there wasn't much time value left in that 185, but the market opened down. So worked out well for them. They didn't call away from us. It worked out well for us too, because we pocketed $4.11 and now we're lined up to get the dividend as well. Since on these 100 shares we own UPS still looking good. Wouldn't surprise me at all if it came down, you know, we're in a nice uptrend here, which would put it coming down to about 180 if it breaks through these moving averages, which is possible that it might. So we'll see how it turns out. Otherwise, pocket some nice money, and now we get to receive the dividend from UPS as well. Now, Disney, this was our shot at, at a big win here, one of those 50x wins I made a video about several weeks ago. We entered it here, and Disney had broke through this moving average. Big volume this day. It looked good, but then it just dropped, dropped, dropped. And we probably could have got out of this and been at a break even or small loss, but I, I have position size available in Disney. So I just decided to roll this 105 down to 100. So that's what we did here. We rolled the February 105 put down to March 100. So we gave ourselves five more dollars to be wrong. And the reason I did that is I, I do like where it's at. So our 100 strike is about right in here, which is an area that served as resistance for it back in December. Served as resistance briefly for about a week in early or mid January. So if it does continue to come down, it pierces through this green 50 moving average. I expect it to find support at, around this 100 mark, at least temporarily. So we'll see what happens. It very well may get sandwiched in between these moving averages for a while. I expect it to find support somewhere in here and then try and push through this red exponential moving average on the daily chart. Now the, the weekly chart doesn't look quite as exciting for a bull move because Although it has made a higher high here, it found strong resistance at this green 50 exponential moving average. So, and it could even come all the way back down to retest this $85, $90 area for support. But the odds are that it'll come down to about a hundred if anything. And so we'll adjust as need be next month. All right. Our next one was our triple Q, T, Q, Q, Q. I feel like the market may be trying to bottom out. And of course, if we have a bad recession this year, then, then all bets are off. But I feel like we may be trying to bottom out here. So I'm slowly liquidating some of the extra TQQQ protective put options that I, I have and use that to buy some call options that expire 
in January of 25, so two years out. And so we did sell two of the January 19th of next year, 24, $15 protective put options. We sold two of them and used that money to buy one of the January 17th of 2025, $45 calls. So the, the stock will have to go up quite a bit up here to this $45 area. But again, we got two years. So trying to switch some of that, those extra puts over to fund our calls. All right. Now we have MDT. Let's pull that chart up here. So this is one I thought about letting being called away from us, but I decided to go ahead and roll it out. It has earnings, and I try not to trade through earnings, but this call option down here at 80, it's pretty far in the money. So if the stock does drop, it can drop, if it's if it's at the same spot where it's at now when it announces earnings, it can drop about $5 and we'd still be right at the money. It is in a nice uptrend on this daily chart and the weekly chart. It shows some nice strength over the past couple months. So I did roll this, the return was still pretty decent. Looks like we got about, let's see, a dollar and twenty-eight cents per share for the three hundred shares. So I was happy with that, and and if it comes down, then it should it's looking for support right now. So I think we're at a good area here where it should find support. And if it declines, of course, then we'll we'll adjust the position. All right, AMT. This was a four-leg trade, and what we did here, we repositioned ourselves a little bit. So for the call side. We had sold the 190 call. AMT has advanced nicely. And it's when we got put at a quite a bit higher strike price than we've been working. And so what we did is we rolled that 190 call up by $5 to 195. So we rolled it up from about here up to about here. So not much, but it is still $5. And AMT is showing a little bit of weakness. However, it is approaching an area that should serve as support around 205. So what I did with my cash secure put option is I also rolled that down from 210 per share down to 200 per share. So we went from right here where it's at, at the money, we rolled it down to 200. So we gave ourselves quite a bit of more room for it to come down and still win. And it, it, if I remember correctly, it is announcing earnings during this cycle. So we'll keep an eye on that. All right, the next one is Amazon's is when we've been adding some positions to periodically. And we sold the March $90 put, received $1.69 per share. So the 90 put, it's down here below this area that served as support for it several times over the past couple months. So we gave ourselves pretty good room to be wrong. About $7 it can come down and we'll still get a win. The buyers and sellers, pretty even. We see some strong selling and some strong buying. Buyers maybe have a little bit of, of an advantage over the past month and a half. The weekly chart, though, you want to be careful here because it is in a, a pretty clearly defined downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows. And it appears to maybe even be making another lower high. So that's why I sold it pretty far out of the money. But with this having about 28 days until expiration, if it does come down, then we have some time to play with it and work it if need be. All right, Tyson Chicken is another one TSN that we've been adding to. And it just, again, it continues to trade sideways. No matter what the market does, it just trades sideways. Now it is going ex-dividend in the cycle, so just be aware of that. But it's just been trading sideways since early February, so about almost two weeks now. So I'm slowly adding to it. And if it continues to find support around this $60 area, we'll keep keep selling cash care put ups until we get a, a full position. Now we move on to NEP. So NEP also has been trading fairly sideways, again, kind of like, like Tyson. And so we went ahead and sold another cash care put, the March 17th $70 put at $1.10 per share. Let's pull this chart back up here. So we see it's been trading sideways. It is, it is in a wedge here. So at some point, it will break out of this wedge, either to the upside or downside. Right now, it is below this green 50 moving average. So I don't really like that. I wish it was above it, but it's not. So we'll keep an eye on that. What I do like over here on this weekly chart, we see the wedge again here, is that the backstop of the support is around $67 at this 200 moving average, just red 200 exponential moving average. And we, we do see it making higher highs, although it's making, I'm sorry, higher lows, although it's also making lower highs. So we'll, this is one we'll keep an eye on, but it does have this moving average of support. So if it does go down this moving average, then our, our $70 cash secure put option will be in the money by about $2.50. And we do see those pretty strong volume from the sellers, but part of that was buyers bidding it up, sellers pushing it right back down. But again, this area ten is still holding a support. So I like that and felt comfortable adding to that. Finally, one 
last position here in CH Robinson Worldwide, ticker symbol CHRW. We see we sold a 97.5 cash secure put option. Look at the chart here. So our 97.5 strike price is below both these moving averages on the daily chart. We see nice buying pressure from, from the buyers. We see the stock is making higher highs and higher lows. Now a big red down day today on decent volume, kind of average, maybe a little above average volume. I do expect it to come back down to around 100 before it begins to try to find support. It could try and find support where it's at like it did back on February 9th, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if it came down to this area here around 100 that served as resistance for it multiple times over the past several months and is also right at our moving average. Now looking at the weekly chart, we see nice buying pressure from the sellers here. I'm sorry, from the buyers. Nice buying pressure in these green volume bars. And that propelled the stock from 86 all the way up to almost 109. And now we're coming back down to kind of see where we're going to find support at. Again, you see this, this area right here where it served as resistance for about a month and a half, two months. So if that now turns into support for a month and a half, two months, well, we're going to do great on these trades. So busy day today, the third Friday of the month. And the day or two before, that's always our busiest days of the month. So now things will kind of calm down and we'll, of course, be looking for more opportunities to put our capital to work. We're letting several positions be called away from us or expire worthless. So we'll have some capital available next week to hopefully find some good new positions. So I hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.